I'd like to call the meeting to order. And I'll first, I'll read the rules of conduct for a hybrid virtual meeting. This meeting will be held both in person and virtual. This session is being both video and audio recorded. Board members and staff who are joining, joining virtually will generally remain on mute except when speaking or voting and will generally be keeping video of themselves on throughout the meeting. If a member of the public joining virtually creates an audio or video disruption, they will be manually ejected from the meeting upon strict recommendations of staff or the first selectman. If attending virtually, public comments during the meeting can be submitted through the chat feature in or wave your hand and request your mic to be unmuted. Please include in both method, methods your name and address. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic from which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I move to approve the Board of Selectmen agenda for September 5th, 2023. Any discussion? No. No, any all those in favor? So approved. approval of the minutes. I move to approve the Board of Selectmen regular meeting minutes for August 15th, 2023. Any discussion? I wasn't there, so I so can we even vote on it? Right now, no, we can't do that. There's not a form. Okay. Then we'll table that for the next right. meeting. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have just two votes for the uh, to approve the uh, the minutes. Is that enough? You know, because we have a, we do have a quorum here. How yeah. many? You need a majority vote. So right. You need a majority vote, and you have majority here. Yes, but I can't vote because I wasn't there. But you can vote. You yeah. vote there. Yeah. I would go ahead and vote. Okay. Through. And then if anybody has final minutes, we can amend them. Okay, that's true. And okay. We got with it. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Audience and citizens. Old business. Public works dump truck and order update. Mark. Yes. Yeah, so Elizabeth just came on. And we had, and I'll let Elizabeth take this over as soon as she. Becomes a person. Becomes <laughs> She's there. something other than the sky. <laughs> there she oh, is. I saw it. Now it's your building. I think it's, it's her house. Time. I believe that's probably a house. She wants me on the side of the house. She's muted. Can you hear her, Beth? Yep, I'm here now. Thanks. Sure. So we looked at three. Three vendors, Freightliner, Peterbilt, and Kenworth. And um, the Freightliner was the least expensive at $227,429. Peterbilt came in at $258,487. And Kenworth came in at $270,000. So, Beth, do you want to um, tell the board what you and uh, Andy are recommending? Sure. Our main concern and why we originally went with a Peterbilt is because the service time is quicker and where we don't have backup vehicles, we thought um, for the small price increase, it was worthwhile. But now it's a $30,000 difference and Andy and I don't feel we can justify that difference. So the state uses freight liners. They are reliable. It's just that the state trucks get serviced before the municipalities. That's the only thing we might run, you know, run into problems. Right. So no action will be taken if the recommendation is the low bidder. Uh, but if we, I put it on the agenda because we hadn't, Beth and Andy hadn't formally made up a decision of whether we might stay with our recommendation for the Peterbilt. But the difference. What did we budget it for? Um, we budgeted two hundred forty thousand. I think two hundred and forty-five is the exact number. And freight liners came in at two twenty-seven or twenty-nine. But Peterbilt jumped up to two fifty-eight. 
487. So we were surprised that it jumped that much. I mean, we have both Peterbilt and Freight Miner, correct, Beth? Both, both trucks, I've been told they will have chassis sometime between January 2024 and March. That's the best window they can give me. And the Peterbilt, Beth, uh, it's my opinion, you verify, please, that we did cut them a PO, but now that they've increased the amount by 15000 I think we could void that PO. Oh, we definitely can, because when I issued it, it was, he basically said, this isn't even really a placeholder. They weren't building chassis at the time, he said. But we had to, because of ARPA funds, we had to issue a PO. Okay. So what year what year are these um vehicles? I'm just curious. They're new, right? They're brand new. Oh, they're They'll brand new. be brand new. Yeah, yeah they haven't been built. The they haven't been built yet. No. We've been waiting two years to get back into the business of making trucks. Okay. Why was there a change in the uh, purchase on a repeater bill? You know why? Um, they said they wouldn't commit to a price, Beth, please verify this, until they actually had a chassis on order because the, the supply right, chain. Because of, yeah, that's exactly it. Supply chain material prices were so volatile at the time. They were really just giving best guess estimates. And um, the last Peterbilt we bought two years ago, was closer to 195 so the prices skyrocketed and they didn't know where it would be exactly and they couldn't hold the price okay. was the board okay with our yeah. decision to yeah go so um, we'd rather peter but they seem to price themselves out you know what that's how it is everybody right. wants more money Everybody, insurance costs, everything's going up. It's we've had to increase the prices. Everybody has. All right. So Beth, we'll um, wrap up that paperwork tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. And then hold on till executive session, because um, we're going to invite you in, Beth. All right. Can you just text me because I won't have that link. No, you're just going to stay on. You're not going to leave. Okay. Okay. Um, I, sent her, huh? I did send her the link the email through email. Are you doing a different executive no, session? No, but I know what she wants. Mute it. Hello, Barbara. Hi, Barbara. There are new business. Um, I moved to hello. approve. Did you say something, Barbara? She I just said, said hello back. It took me a minute to find my mute. <laughs> <laughs> I move to approve Mark Walter as the Department of em uh, Emergency Management Services Reg Regional Designated Proxy. Any discussion? What does that mean? So every year, you, uh, Stephen is year? actually the official representative, the CEO of the town for the Emergency Management DEMAS budget that we put together every year. And it's actually put together by Jerry James and um, our designees. And it's a very involved budget with equipment the towns need for emergency services. And I'll be going to the um, meeting tomorrow morning, but I have to bring a proxy that says I have Stephen's vote. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'm representing Columbia. Okay, great. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, nothing on Columbia Lake. Appointments, resignations. We have received a letter from Christine Sposito that she uh, resigned from the HVAC, the Porter HVAC Building Committee. Do we need to vote on that? Just no, no, no. Uh, it's just for information. And Barbara, is the Board of Ed going to send a new member to represent BOA on that building committee? It'll be on our agenda for Monday, or yes, for Monday. I know in Christine's letter, she said Leah was looking, was going to Okay. Leah. Leah. So she'll probably, she will be formally, you know, put to that board on Monday. Great. Then she'll have to send a letter to um, board of selectmen. Yeah. Um, town administrator's report. 
Um, I heard there was the uh, latest newsletter from AHM. Looks like they're uh, super busy. There's a lot going on there. Uh, I've been in contact with uh, Tressa. And actually, our little uh, book library that's over at the Murphy House, mm -hmm. it's the highest used library in the whole series. Oh, really? Got a little puppy. It's the same pool, so they keep it tight from the books. That's great. They're spending from the grant. I think every time they replace it, is it yeah. how much was it? 300 or maybe more. I think it's more than that. Maybe 400 dollars to buy new books to put back in the book. That's cool. So that's good. Um COVID really put her on people. Right. They haven't recovered. Nope. Also, I just wanted to tell you that I'm starting, I got a lot of information back based on the last meeting. You requested answers to questions concerning the um, electronic chargers, EV chargers. Mm -hmm. So, and I've talked to other towns. Um, Colchester, I mean, Coventry, I believe, puts in an additional 15% and they bank it for maintenance. I think that was the number John said. And Hebron uh, charges a little more for maintenance as well. And it seems like maintenance is not driving a profit. It's just part of it. Um, so you didn't put the extra. You could do that, correct. And then we also um, have in here the uh, installation of the, it's to start the project, Titans. Letter of uh, intent, and then also the loop access agreement, and we're going to bring this back up for the board of selectmen meeting on the nineteenth while we're all here. So I didn't really prepare to do I this. Three that on the way. So that's what I have there. And if anybody has, after going over all this, you have more questions, please get it to me in, before the meeting. Um, I'll also have the loop agreement looked at by council just to make sure there's nothing getting in there. I also the uh, real interesting meeting Beverly Thrillo and I had with Novus Insight, our IT company, to actually have IT insurance now. You have to have what's called an incident response plan so that if we're ever hacked, uh, we have a plan that we can immediately go to uh, to reduce the vulnerability and increase the speed at which we can be back on our feet. Um, it's very involved. There's going to be, they're going to be um, interviewing all of our department heads, looking at the types of software that we're using, if that software allows any access into our system. Um, they're going to be looking at uh, much more training. Most of the um, vulnerability we have is due to somebody opening a file that's actually an executable file, and they're getting really tricky now. They're hacking other companies' email lists, sending it as if it's a trusted vendor to you. Oh, yeah, we know. It's, it's endless. So we we loosely, we look at, uh, what is it, uh, Mitch? Just Manchester Hospital. Yeah, my daughter's in the ER. She's still doing paper. Yeah. yeah. So it's been a month. Yeah. Monday, the, third. the FBI is investigating that one. It's Russia. Oh, is it? Russia. Oh, gosh. Well, I just wanted to give everybody a heads up on that. We're also preparing for the hurricane season. And um, I included the Eversource recommendations. And then now they have a. Um, QR code and this this QR code accesses this is how I can get into the municipal hub really quick and the municipal hub for the town. You didn't give it to them. Oh, I didn't. No, I didn't want this to go out. So this QR code <laughs> is for me to access Mini Hub, and that's how we we log in all of our communication during a storm and back. We talked about kind of like having us, the board of selectmen, members of the board of selectmen be trained in some kind of um, what to do if there's a hurricane. And Steve's out and you're out. Right. 
Yeah, so some kind, some kind of training or process. Well, the good thing too is we're upgrading all of our manuals. Um, Jen has been mad with consolidating because you can imagine our officers are full of manuals, but we're trying to create it down to what Steve's vision is: is one very quick access, everything you ever want to know on flash cards when everything is blowing up. And that would be if you. If you put on cards and then laminate them mm -hmm. and put them in books, it pulls out. Yeah. Kind of yeah. And we just had a, <laughs> a meeting with Eversource today with uh, the fire department, Jerry James, Beth Lent, myself, and it's all on um, accurately evaluating damage to the lines of whether you call it in as a one, two, or three. And a one is a life's in danger, a two is the roads blocked and Pending emergency vehicles. Three is, it's not great, but wait, wait. Take out a couple of houses. Right. But so, just to somehow let us know and okay. get us involved if we need if we need to be. You do that. But, um, also, Carol Price uh, gave me a letter that the on May twenty third the tax sale was fully completed. That we just had the tax auction auction. And so, how many um, properties sold? Two. She said all the properties were sold at the auction and have been redeemed. I believe oh, they, 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 the people have back. bought back their properties. That's good. Yeah, that's awesome. That's it is, except they're right. paying more money. If they right. Yes, but you know what? If they didn't have the money at the time, that's great. Yeah. That's good news. You got to put it. That is good news. And we're also working on. There's a. a I believe you'll see something you find it called Capital Region Council of Government, and this is the Climate Adaptation Plan. It's open online if you want to put any thoughts in the, the redoing the whole climate plan. So I guess that's because of all the flooding we've been having. Because we've never had flooding. No, no, not really. Anyway, so. Always a lot of And then I think that's all I had. And then correspondence. Yeah, you can see a whole bunch of articles on the fire department and AHM and the fact that Trailside Treasures is relocating and staying in company. One that's Cars one Mill Road. Right. Wherever that is. I'm it's gonna... right at right where Cars Mill comes into. It, there's there's like a modern, six. a mid-century modern build, mm -hmm. office oh, building. I know which one. Yeah. 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 Oh, awesome. that's cool. That is nice. The next is the budget. I move to approve transfer totaling $3,365. Any discussion? These are for last year. We didn't have these in our draft. Um, they were mailed out on Saturday, my bad. Uh, Oh, she's on vacation. Yes. So, any, any thoughts, any discussion? How are we doing on contingency? How's the contingency budget doing? Is there anything left in it? There is. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. So moved. Um, approval uh, payment of bills. I approve to. I move to approve the payment of bills totaling one hundred. Okay. Do refunds refunds? First? Yeah. okay. Do refunds. I move to approve the uh, refunds of one thousand one hundred seventeen dollars and ninety six cents. Any discussion on that? Oh, no, let me look at it. I didn't have these. And no, and refunds just coming back. Right there. Thanks. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. So I move to approve the payment of bills totaling one hundred and thirteen thousand seven hundred and sixty six thirty seven, consisting of twenty twenty three twenty twenty four emergency and twenty twenty three twenty twenty four regular unemployment credit card payments. Okay. Okay. Questions on any of these? So I see lots of late testing this summer. Have we had anything negative coming up? No. 
I mean, and we had a few concerns with some weird algae blooms, but nothing. Yeah. Everything was come back. Fine. And with all that rain that we had, nothing. It's still got stuff. That's I think it's lush in the lake. That's awesome. It's been going over the dam all summer, right? Yeah. Every day. A uh, couple, couple of days. Can you shoot? There's a new bug coming. The zigzag elm beetle. Oh, no. It's in Massachusetts. But there's not a lot of elms. All those in favor? Give me a minute, please. It's still cutting trees. Yes. And keep up. My beaches look warm. Yeah, I just lost one at my black beach. It died in one season. All these come out and they're all on the ground. Mine is crashing. My big old girl is crashing. And I'm now to move down. And it's in my front yard. I did. You should see he's a beef preserver. Say that all the beach. So I'm actually wondering if it was from the forest fires in Canada. Oh, but there are late leaping right at the last thing to I get leaves. I was I'm wondering if they were getting those leaves when the forest fire smoke was hanging and they got leaves. That's my that's my wonder. We'll see you next year. My my first nurse. And there's a, there's a beech leaf disease that, that came in. There was birch bark and there was birch leaf. Yeah. But I, it seemed fun. Like every single one I see. Are we ready to vote? Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And audience of citizens, are the barbers or anything you want to say? So I could just inform the Board of Selectmen, um, our building was so hot today. We had classrooms by 1030 in the morning that were already 85 degrees. By noontime, several were close to 90. So for tomorrow, we've made the decision we're going to close about 1230. Uh, we're going to try to move those really, really hot classrooms that were in the upper 80s to 90 into some spaces such as the library such as my office. I'm going to move all the furniture and let a classroom come into my space. Um, but we're hoping by leaving at 1230, the hot, hot heat will be avoided. When, once we hit 90, nothing, there's no learning going on. The, the children and the staff are just sweating. They're hot. <laughs> yeah, they're very hot. Yeah. And Barbara, do you want to tell that you hired Joe Marsh? So yes, yeah, so Joe Marsh, um, we're really excited that we have a new position that the Board of Education had approved with our budget. And Joe Marsh has been hired as a security officer. Uh, so he is going to be an integral part of our school safety plan. He will be spending his days uh, walking around the building outside, inside, greeting families. He's going to really help a lot with traffic control in the morning with the, <clears throat> the you know, between the buses and the drop-offs. Uh, you know, we already have had some incidents that would have required potentially a police officer to be called just, you know, uh, individuals on the premises who necessarily shouldn't be there. Not that it's an emergency, uh, but now we, we have him outside. Everybody's really excited. The kids are excited to have him. Um, there's, there's so many benefits to having him on our staff and our, we have received nothing but positive accolades uh, since he's joined us. So really happy about that. He greets people as they go in the door. He seems very pleasant. Yeah. And he lives in Columbia and his kids have gone through Porter. So a lot of people know him. He made a good impression when I met him. Okay. Do you have any um, board, of, board member comments? So I move that we Enter into, uh, we close this meeting and enter into executive session. At 7.25. At 7.25. And ask Mark Walters and Beth one to say.
Okay. And then we, we made no decisions in executive session and we came out at 739. I just say that you said it. I just said it now. <laughs> no, Great. I move to approve the appointment of Kyle Pelletier for the position of public works road form. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. And that was 739 out of executive. And what time did we go into executive? You know what I said? 25, 725, I think we went in. Check with Jen. Yes, I'll just put that in. <laughs> and, and meeting is adjourned. Motion to adjourn at seven forty. I agree. Yeah, support the order. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank you. Good night, all. <laughs>